Hey, g'day and welcome back to the build series. Geez, we're getting close now, so close. I uh, get this thing towed down the road this week and uh, I've taken it out to get it weighed on the way bridge and had to go down to uh, Vic Roads, my local authority that uh, gives you the registration. So you'll see whether I pass that inspection or not. It's uh, pretty nerve wracking. Uh, six months it's taken to get to this point. Uh, the anxiety around not passing that test has been high, I tell you, but uh, You'll have to watch on to see whether or not I got it done. Uh, a few other things I'm going to cover. Put the gas struts on the roof, gas struts in all the hatches, uh, the seat and um, over the fridge box area. I'm going to fit that off during the episode. Uh, a few other bits and pieces. Got to finish off some trims, uh, get a 12 volt oven in and a few other things as well. So stay tuned for that and uh, we'll hook straight in. Cheers. It's gas strut day. So I've got to get a gas strut on to uh, this door, obviously the roof, I've uh, got to lift one up there as well, and the uh, the other hatch around the other side of the van for the storage area. So a local supplier in my hometown, he's uh, done a really good job here, just drawing everything, telling me exactly where I need to mount stuff. Um, he even lent me his rivet gun, which is fantastic, and when I went to buy rivets this morning, uh, the rivet shop on a Saturday morning has got COVID, so they've closed. So I was left in a bit of a pickle, so I went back to old mate, and he gave me a whole bag of rivets for nothing as well. What a legend. Anyway, so I'd never done this before. Um, got to mount these on <coughs> here, uh, one on either side. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I've got freestanding doors that'll lift up and get out of the way. Um, but we'll give it a go and see how it works out. Yep, nothing's ever straightforward. <clears throat> First problem, the rivet gun doesn't fit in the cavity. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have to come up with a different solution to attach these to the back of there. <sighs> Why does nothing ever work? Uh, I couldn't do the kitchen one because the arms were too long on the riveting gun, so I <clears throat> came around and did this one instead. Sorted. So there, just pop riveted into the back of that. Hopefully that's strong enough. And then it's the bracket that goes along the back. There's a cavity inside this uh, profile, which is just big enough to take the rivets, which is perfect. So she seems fairly strong. <clears throat> seems to work pretty well. Pulls in tight at the bottom. Happy with that. It's going, been going okay. Um, after I figured out that the drill bit I was using on the first ones was a lot of bit too big and the rivets wouldn't pull up tight. But uh, we've worked through that now and these are on super tight. It's been a bit of a chore. Um, ended up buying a small tool so it'll fit in the cavity there because the other one I had was, that I borrowed was too, too long for in there. So yeah, I'll just finish these off. And um, we'll be good to go. So these babies go on like this. So yeah, just got to figure out how high I want it so that it doesn't hit the awning, which I think call that good. Yeah, now I've just got to mount the brackets on. Uh, some of these babies on here, right where I need it.
thing go? Yeah, so we're indoors. That's the canvas in. Uh, didn't show the fitment of that. I'll probably be doing it again anyway, so I can show you next time around. I'm not overly happy with it. There's too much um, canvas in that corner. It's been made with a vertical seam. It should have been made with a slight angle back this way. Um, it's uh, obviously when the roof comes up, it goes back a bit and it needs uh, not to be vertical there. So I've got too much in that top corner. You can see there it's come out, but I haven't because I haven't fixed it um, with a screw or anything. But yeah, it's bunching up in there. Now, I've got a bit of bungee on the outside all the way around that just pulls it in when you lower it down. That works really well. And it pulls this back tight. <clears throat> Looks ugly. It's all bunched up and terrible, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. If it's flapping around the wind and carrying on, then I'm going to have to send it back for alteration. Um, it's a quality product. I mean, he's only going off my measurements, um, and I probably should have specified exactly what that angle was and stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, can be fixed later on, easy to get out, so we'll live with it for now. Gas struts work well. I reckon they're right at the ma maximum load though um and i haven't put the solar panels on yet so there's another 15 kilos of solar panels to go on the roof which will which will put a bit more load on them uh so i'll make the gastro joint reckons that once i fitted the solar panels and she's all done um come back and we'll prop the roof up pull them out um pretty quickly they're just unclip and pop out he'll regas them to a bit more pressure and we'll put them back in and should be sweet uh just chuck the handle up there i can just grab and pull down and push up uh, it's really easy to lift up and down uh, the last little bit drops, so you've got to be careful it doesn't crack you in the head. But apart from that, she's pretty good. Uh, what have I got to do? Still got to put this seat in. That's a, that's a reasonably big job. I think I'll do that next weekend. Uh, we'll finish off all the internal wiring. So there's lights to come in here. Um, going to put some fans on the from the roof there that shoot down towards the bed. Uh, there's going to be some USB outlets, some Siggy lighter out, out, um, outlets and stuff for charging phones and all sorts of things um, through there and um yeah little trims to cover up these screws and then we're nearly there we're nearly there um but she's looking good pretty happy with how it's turning out and i'm just going to use a bit of the uh, pure light to create a false floor for in here so it'll just go across like that and i'll return it up here a bit as well so stuff doesn't fall down in there um i'll just run some angle aluminium angle along both sides screw it and glue it to the wall and then it can just sit inside there i have to make it in such a way that it can go in on an angle and sit without getting hooked up not sure how that's going to work yet but we'll just play around with it a bit <clears throat> and see what happens yeah, so just chucked a bit of angle in there which gives me clearance over that filter Ah, oh, the two-piece trick worked <clears throat> very well. This is, um, so this is piece one. So I just cut the piece in half. So I've got two bits. And the idea is that you drop the first one in and it's got a bit of a plate there to stop stuff going under the sink. And I just put a bit of um, leftover alley on the bottom there to create a support for the other one when it goes in. So just chuck it in. It's in tight. That one in. Boom. That's a big Bertha. Uh, Road Chef oven, 12 volt oven. It's uh, two elements. Comes with a couple of trays and a and a uh, dish as well. So I'm going to put him up in here. I'm going to mount it to the ceiling. It's got these brackets that are ceiling mount. Um, I'm going to use bolts though with nuts rather than screws just so I can't vibrate loose and they'll go up through actually they'll come down I'll come down through the roof and then I'll pick them up from the bottom and do the uh, nylon nylock nut up I've figured out though that when you put the oven f tight against the ceiling up there like that it uh, the door hits the door when it swings open hits this which is rather frustrating so I'm gonna to have to mount it lower than the roof which means I'll just put something between like a buffer thing needs to be 10 15 mil so what I was thinking I'd use is a piece of leftover flooring actually from the van which is uh, really lightweight stuff so I'll just cut a bit that's the same dimensions as the top of this extending out to where the bracket will go 
So I just got it upside down, <clears throat> and that's where the brackets will go. So that'll be mounted on the ceiling, and this will be mounted to that. And I'll just mark the holes for the brackets. Got a spot to drill holes through that. And the same on the other side, and then I'll be able to actually just chuck that up on the ceiling and screw it in temporarily just to hold it there. Drill through the these holes, so I can drill up through that. And then uh, I should be able to go inside and drop these down through from the top and then lift the oven up. In theory, that all should go pretty well. We'll see how we go. down through which is pretty much the perfect length <coughs> what I might do is just put one on and put the oven onto it see if that works I'll carry a bit of the weight figure out how to do those screws up <laughs> from the top and outside at the same time. The old sticky tape, the uh, spanner on trick seems to work. Yeah, time to put a seat in here. Uh, that's the next job. Uh, so I've also got this front wall frame in already and I want the seat to be able to open so I can access the fridge. It's looking challenging, but I think I've got a solution. So I'm just gonna put this unequal angle all the way around for strength. And I'll just screw it and glue it to the perimeter. Uh, and then that'll make a little shelf for the platform for the seat to sit on. Um, on this side, I don't really have any clearance because the door of the fridge slides there uh, for this hatch, so I can't I can't go below that, um, not by much anyway, because the fridge will catch on it when it slides out, so I might have to put a bit of angle upside down, and I'm not really sure yet, we'll figure that out in a second, but yeah, a bit of a challenge there, uh, and then I'll run the unequal angle along the back as well. Uh, I've got a bit of form ply, which I'll show you in a sec, that's uh, just a bit of plywood with black paint on it basically, that's used for concreting. I will um, cut a piece that fits perfectly in there, bring it past the edge a little bit, and then I'm going to cut a section out of that um, all the way around, which will form a lid that can lift up and down. I'll hinge it along that edge there. Anyway, hook into it.
that's the alley in the angle uh, all the way around. Just um, obviously that's got a cure and everything else, but I'll get on to cutting a piece to fit, a uh, piece of ply to fit in there neatly and then um, see how it sits in and then figure out how big I want the opening to be. There she is, <clears throat> after a bit of massaging. Uh, the circular saw doesn't love it. Straight lines weren't its friend. But I uh, ended up chucking a router on and just f fixing that edge by clamping a straight edge on there and then just running a router along until it got back to flat because <laughs> it was not looking too flash and then just put a curve on the front edge. So it's turned out a right, I think. It's had a little check out there because it's got to go and butts into the shower door frame. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. I think it'll work all right. And I just got to obviously cut out the bit that's going to open with hinges. But I'll figure that out once I've just set it in there and make sure it looks all right. And then uh, we'll go from there. So I bit the bullet, chucked some cuts in, made it into a lid that opens. Uh, not the neatest job. I had to use uh, the compound mitre saw, but it didn't reach the whole way. So then I had to do a short section with a circular saw. And of course that all went a bit funny. Uh, so then I got the router out and uh, tidied the edges up and then put a rounding on them as well. And the same along the back. I've got these hinges. I think I actually bought these as a bit of an idea maybe to use for the pop top. Uh, lid at the back. I ended up going with stainless steel, which was a better idea. These probably wouldn't have lasted in the out in the environment, and probably not strong enough anyway. Even though we're industrial rated, um, yes, yeah, so I'll just use those, and then the backing plate will just come up at an angle from here up to the wall, and then a cushion will sit on that and over those hinges as well, and should be job done. Yes, yeah, so I'll get into just screwing these on and putting it in. There she is in, it's uh, looking all right, not too shabby. Um, it's just sitting there, I haven't glued it in or anything yet. I did cut a piece to go in the back, but it looks naff, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, because of the curve on the top there, it actually just sits vertical and looks a bit silly. So, almost vertical. So, a bit of a waste of time putting it in. What I'll do is get the fiberglass and put it on. So I've got a sheet of fiberglass there to cover that curve, so I'll glue that to the wall. I'll bring it all the way up to the edge of that piece of aluminium that sits along the top there, holding the pop top on, so that it's got a nice even line. Um, and then I'll just run with this as it is for now. I might put some nice bits of timber along the edge or something and uh, tidy those up in, over time. But I'll just get big cushions that sit in there for now. And surprisingly, this worked, although I'm gonna to have to get a gas truck because it's slightly too far forward so it won't start up on its own speed. But you can get into the fridge. So that worked out good. Job done. Just got this uh, foam floor mat. Thinking about putting it in here. It fits widthwise in there perfectly and I'll just run a full length straight across. Cut it around a few things. Uh, I've noticed climbing in there to do work on electricals and stuff, it's like just knee breaking. My old weary knees can't handle it. So I reckon that'll be good. Plus also when I throw stuff in there when we're traveling, that's moving around, it won't um, rub and break as easily, hopefully. I'm not gonna glue it in. I'm just gonna sit it in and hopefully it stays in place. Uh, I don't really wanna glue it in in case it falls apart in the future and I can have to pull it back out again. But yeah, it'll make climbing in there getting into the storage area, which I need to do occasionally to get stuff over the back corner or repair things or get the battery out and so on. Uh, I think it'll be good. And then eventually I'll get some penetrations that um, things that attach to the floor for tying stuff down to. So things don't move around. There's vulnerable gear here. I don't want things smashing into it. So everything's gonna have to be ockied down when I'm traveling 
especially on rough roads. That's the plan anyway. Unfortunately, I was hoping that it might go up the back a bit. I'll see how much is left at the end and whether I can fashion something. It would be good to go up, get it up to up here somewhere, um, just to protect that back wall as well from things impact moving around. Get on with it. Okay, this is the solution. Oh, it's a bit dark in here. There we go. Just went with a flathead screw and a washer behind it. Just knocked them down in a few locations. I think that's probably good enough. Might put one over here or over there just to hold that down, but it's gonna have weight on it anyway. So now I've just gotta trim around the mud guard and a few pipes there with a the Stanley and up against that wall. There she is, all in. Just it's semi-permanent, I'll call it. Uh, Probably never come out again. I just don't know how well this is going to wear, so we'll just see how that goes. Uh, I won't worry about going in under there or up the back just yet. I've got a little bit left, which I'll just keep on the shelf. I could probably cover that area. I'll have to cut two sections though to get it covered fully. Um, don't really want to go and punch screws into the skin of the van, honestly, so uh, we'll just leave it for a while. Apart from that, I've got to move on to electric soon. I bought some of these uh, June camp chairs. I had the bigger version for many years in an old camper trailer, which I really rated. I reckon the most comfortable chairs out there for the price. They're on sale, half price at Anaconda. This is the next model down. I got the smaller ones. I uh, didn't think the big ones were necessary. I ended up breaking one of my big ones, so I figured I'd splurge and get some new ones. I'm just trying to figure out a way of mounting these in here. They actually fit between the bed rails, so I could put there's two chairs, I could put some sort of rack system up there and they can just slide in um, as an option or a divider, sit them up vertical and they go in there in a divider type arrangement as an option or just throw them in there, which is probably what I'll do for a while, but... Alright, wish me luck. <clears throat> We're about to go over to the Rego office and try and get a number plate for this thing. So here we go, all the lights are working, I just checked, so that's the first box ticked anyway. <laughs> well that was a bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Winning. Wowee, so success, we got the plates on, fantastic. It's been uh, five months of toil to get to this point and a lot of sleepless nights wondering whether I was gonna roll into that Rego office and they were gonna say, yeah, no, nah, not good enough, mate. Got a problem here, got a problem there. Would have been the most expensive garden ornament uh, I've ever owned, I reckon, because uh, yeah, a lot of money's gone into this and a lot of time and effort and stress and pressure and blood and sweat and tears. So glad to get those plates on, uh, I tell you. Anyway, Progress has slowed a bit actually since I put the plates on. I've had a couple of weekends off. It's the first time this year, so uh, it's been nice to not have to work on the van, but I really need to get it absolutely finished now because all the 12 volt internal stuff's got to be done. Uh, just the lights and switches and all that sort of good stuff, which I didn't need for Rego. So we'll get onto that. That'll be the next episode. Running through the Victron gear, a few power, a bit about the power, uh, consumption and other things, uh, the panels on the roof, all that sort of good stuff. So stay tuned, join in next week, and uh, we'll be back for more. Cheers. Bye.